It's the 1st of November 2020 and three new laptops have just gone on sale. These are the Acer Swift 3X, the ASUS VivoBook TP470 and the Dell Inspiron 15 7000 2-in-1. The common factor with these three laptops is they all pack in graphics called Intel Iris Xe Max. And today I'm going to address the question, what exactly the blooming heck is Intel Iris Xe Max? Over the past year or so, when Intel's been talking about Ice Lake and then Tiger Lake, we've seen a number of roadmaps and architecture days that talk about their Iris Xe graphics. These have gone under various names. I must confess my personal interest has been on DG1, Desktop Graphics 1, and DG2, which is allegedly coming next year, which will be the decent graphics for the desktop for next year, and Intel might break into gaming on the desktop, which would be a thing. So these three laptops are not currently available in this market. We've only got the slides to work on, but Intel Iris Xe Max, which it turns out is a renaming of Xe LP. It's a discrete version of the graphics that you get inside the Tiger Lake mobile chip. So Intel has produced graphics that are the highest version of Tiger Lake graphics that sit alongside the Tiger Lake graphics. If you look at the breakdown of the feeds and speeds for Max, you will notice four gigabytes of memory with a bandwidth of 68 gigabytes per second. This is LP4266X memory when all said and done. There are two prime reasons why laptop manufacturers put discrete graphics in a laptop when it already has graphics in the processor or APU. The first is marketing. We're told particularly in China PRC, if a laptop doesn't have a badge to say it has add-in graphics, particularly Nvidia, it doesn't sell. It doesn't particularly matter what the add-in graphics are. Sometimes, apparently, it can be retrograde step like MX150. However, if the laptop doesn't pack add-in graphics, it's doomed. The second and more obvious reason is that the integrated graphics are not very good and the add-in graphics are better. And there are two particular reasons why this can be the case other than architecture and shaders stroke execution units, which is dedicated discrete memory for the graphics. Rather than using part of the system memory, you get allocated memory for the graphics, which is faster than the system memory. And the second reason which is associated with that is discrete graphics sit beside the APU CPU and therefore the cooling can cool the graphics on their own rather than cooling a hotter chunk of stuff. Both of these points are covered here because Max has discrete memory for the graphics chip. However, this 4 gig of LP4266X is on board. From the description, it is physically separate to the soldered memory on the motherboard. So say you have 8 or 16 gigs soldered to the board, you have another 4 gig presumably for the graphics. Uh, after all, the math doesn't really work to say you've got 16, take off 4 is 12 plus 4. I'm going to say you've got 8 or 16 for the uh, APU CPU and another 4 for the Max graphics. And then Intel's Deep Link steps into the equation. We've got a number of features here. Additive AI, in other words, AI where it can add the two lots of graphics together. Hyper encode, that sounds interesting. Dynamic power share and a common software framework. So additive AI means that the system decides what's the best thing to do with the hardware. Hyperencode is using the media encoders that are in both graphics chips. Each of them has two media encoders. Add them together, you got four. That means you get more work done. Dynamic power share. Do you want to feed all the power to the CPU APU or do you want to feed less to the CPU and some to the adding graphics? In other words, the power budget. How are you going to handle the power? And associated with that, how are you going to handle the thermals? Common software framework. Common sense, really. If it's all Intel, it's a common software framework. You haven't got any of that nasty NVIDIA stuff going on. And this is where things get peculiar. So we have Intel 11th Gen IE Tiger Lake plus MX350. You will note that says simulated. We have 10th Gen with MX350. And then we have Max. Seeing a graph that says simulated is weird to my mind. The idea that Intel can't get its mitts on Tiger Lake with MX350, I don't quite understand that. 
there's two possibilities. Either the partners won't share the laptops or Tiger Lake with MX350 isn't a thing because Nvidia has recently launched MX450, which is PCI Express Gen 4, and that is intended to partner with Tiger Lake. We're not seeing any reference here to MX450 and no reference to AMD. Less waiting, more creating, additive AI. In other words, you're adding together the capabilities of the two chips, you're getting more work done and quicker. In principle, this is absolutely brilliant. If you're encoding loads of movies or you're doing some sort of batch processing in Lightroom on old photos or some such, which is the type of workload that Intel is talking about, this will doubtless give you huge benefits. Similarly with hyper encoding, XE graphics have double the media encoders of the previous, was it 9.5 gen graphics? And now you've got two of them, so you've got four media encoders. Then we get to gaming, delivering great thin and light 1080p gaming, and yet there isn't a frame rate above 45 FPS and plenty of them are in the 25 to 30. So you might say tolerable. Great, that's a stretch. Also, Max is running even with MX350, which begs the question, what about MX450? On paper, MX450 is a significant step on from MX350, so Intel's charts are already out of date. I specifically asked the question of Intel about additive gaming, which would be the equivalent of SLI or Crossfire X. In other words, when you're gaming, can the system add together the two graphics cores to deliver better gaming experience. But Intel said nothing. So I asked the question, Intel, why are you saying nothing about this? Do you want another opportunity to talk about this subject? Or do you need to make it work? They said, we're gonna talk about it another time. And that was the end of that. I must confess, I was disappointed. However, I now understand that Max is indeed the XE graphics that are inside Tiger Lake. They are discrete, they are therefore additional, they have their dedicated onboard memory, which is the same 4266X as a decent Tiger Lake laptop. Intel is able to switch between the two graphics chips to deliver, frankly, a small amount of extra performance in most apps and games. Clearly, the big step forward comes in additive performance when you add the two things together. In gaming, they're simply not talking about that for whatever reason. And now you know just about as much as I do. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, but make sure you subscribe. Head over to kickguru.net to read our news and reviews.